What's up everybody, how's it going? It's Beck, aka Danzweight here, and welcome to this kind of review impressions video for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, this is not something that I usually do, but as games just seem to get longer and longer, it takes longer and longer for me to basically upload all of them, and having recently finished the game, I figured it's going to take quite a long time before I edit and upload all of this for you guys, so I wanted to share some thoughts and feelings upon finishing the game, just for people who are curious to know what my impressions were having completed the game. So I'm going to keep this relatively brief, it's not going to be some kind of full-on formal review or anything like that, it's more of an impressions without any major spoilers about what happens in the story. So if anyone's worried about spoilers, of course I'm going to talk about general elements of the game, but I'm not going to say, you know, oh here's what happened at the end and, and here's what I think about this particular big story moment, etc. So without much further ado, let's get into it and talk about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. In a nutshell, I would say it's the closest thing I've experienced to Golden Era Final Fantasy since the Golden Era. And for me, the Golden Era has been from basically Final Fantasy VI to Final Fantasy X. Those five games are basically my top five games in the franchise. That's just how I feel. And this is the first time that I felt a game since then has basically reached that kind of level. And that's a pretty big statement for me. And I don't want to just completely have nostalgia goggles about it and just be like, no, nothing can ever touch the golden era. This, in my opinion, is the closest experience I've had to that. So let me talk about some things that I think helped to contribute to this. I think the main things that I really enjoyed about this game, first of all, was just the cast. I've always been a big fan of the Final Fantasy VII cast. I think it's one of its strongest attributes. And in this game, it really shines. And they really made an effort to make sure that the cast was something that you interacted with and engaged with and you truly felt like you went on an adventure with. They were a part of the story, they were a part of the side quest, they were a part of the exploration and even in battle they started to put things in that made them even more connected and cohesive in battle as well. So to first of all talk about the battle system side, I was already a big fan of the Final Fantasy VII Remake battle system. I still contend that it's the best modern day interpretation of the old school kind of ATB system that we have. The mixture of that sort of faster, high octane action, the ability to slow it down and still use your ATB moves. You've got lots of buffs and debuffs that are still effective. You can use elemental magic. And there's still a bunch of things that we remember and love from the original experiences that I think have translated really well. And they continue this trend in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but they add things like, for example, the synergy abilities, which I thought were really cool and useful. Basically, not only to add a little bit of visual flair, because they're almost like mini limit breaks, but also it's the kind of thing that does genuinely contribute in battle, makes them more fun and exciting, and also helps to create a stronger bond with your characters in battle, because you really feel like you're playing in a more collaborative spirit than just controlling three different characters individually, or maybe just healing each other, or something like that. So the battle system, I thought, was really, really good, and I had a lovely time with it. The second thing was the fact that the characters in general, the way that they portrayed them, the energy that they had, the way that they came together in this classic sort of band of misfits kind of way where they each have their own personalities they each have their own styles and stories and backstories and traumas and the way that they find a way to bond with each other and interact with each other and go on this huge adventure it, there's just something really kind of fundamentally enjoyable about that and there were just a lot of great moments of course the stuff from the original that we know and love a lot of those were portrayed and recreated in a really cool way and I definitely really enjoyed seeing those parts of the story. But there were just lots of really cool little moments where they had the sort of, they had the heart and the goofiness and the fun elements of Final Fantasy that so many of the older games have. Because no matter how serious the story gets, no matter how high the stakes get, there's always this sort of element of just silliness and goofiness and humor that happens in these games. And especially in that sort of era, the amount of just times where you're kind of laughing out of nowhere or something really random or really silly happens, that's just part of the Final Fantasy experience, in my opinion. And this game really brought back to life a lot of that stuff. There were just a lot of moments where I was just absolutely cracking up and just really enjoying myself with the party and the interactions and the scenes and the dialogue that they were having. So yeah, just the party and the adventure that you go on together, the way that they brought those guys to life, the voice acting, the performances, I thought everything was just really, really excellent and it really elevated the experience. And I think other than that, the main thing that I want to touch on as like the main positive thing was just the sheer scale and ambition and amount of stuff they were able to put into this game. It absolutely blew my mind. I played two previews of this game and I had no idea 
how big this game truly was. Like, it, it absolutely defied all of my expectations. My playthrough was 103 hours long. Uh, there's still things that I need to do. It was far from an absolute completionist kind of uh, platinum trophy kind of run. There's still things I want to do and go back to. But yes, 103 hours, and I would say a high percentage of that was genuinely me being motivated and going out there and enjoying it and trying to do as many things as I can. And this game has a really uncanny knack for being able to get you to explore and to engage with the game and the world in a way where it feels like it comes from you and your own motivation, as opposed to feeling like you have to tick off a checklist or you have to do it for completion and that kind of thing. And the best way that I can explain this is that there was a moment in the game where there's a mini game that's introduced quite early on and I'm the type of player that in general I tend to not engage with a lot of the mini games or like the you know time trials races you have to get the top rank in this for an achievement generally I don't do that type of stuff I'm more interested in sort of battles exploration bonding with the characters boss fights story progression that kind of thing but for this one I basically ignored this mini game for most of the playthrough and you know it was just an optional thing the game never forced you to do it but I was just like okay that's cool I'm not that interested then there came a chapter in the story where they basically integrated this mini game into the story and it still wasn't really mandatory to do it either you basically could choose to not really do it properly at all but the way that the game sort of enticed me into playing the game it felt really kind of organic and natural and i decided to play the game basically because i wanted to because they made it seem like it'd be a really fun experience that you would have with your party members as a team. So it was kind of like this, everyone's enjoying something, we're doing something together, and you just felt like kind of being a spoil sport for not getting involved with it. And there were definitely multiple moments like that in the game where eventually my feeling was, it felt to me most like, we've all had those days where, for example, your friends will say, you know, hey, let's go out, let's do this together, let's do that together. And you know, you might be tired, you might not be feeling it, you might be generally just a very introverted or kind of antisocial type of person. But, you know, now and then it happens, they, they convince you, they drag you out, and you end up having a really good time. And then you're glad that you end up doing it. And there were elements of that in this game, and for me to be able to say that, and for me to be convinced to do those types of things, the game has to be doing something right. It's just a huge testament to the, the general design and the way that they approached this game, that they were able to get me to enjoy the, the mini games and interacting with the world so much. So that was one of the standout things for me. And of course, alongside that, just the sheer size, ambition, these regions are enormous. It's basically, for me, it was one of the most perfect interpretations of the old school world map system that I think I've ever seen. And the way that you can explore the world, explore the regions, do lots of different world intel, learn more about the world, engage in combat, find these cool little points of interest. Of course, you've got the side quests interspersed among those as well, which I don't think that they overdid. There weren't a huge amount of them to do, which I think was nice because they wanted you to focus, I think, a little bit more on the exploration and just generally looking around and finding things. So I think the side quests were definitely better than Remake, like easily better than Remake, which had pretty poor side quests, in my opinion. The side quests here were good too. And alongside those good side quests, you had all of these really good exploration and mini game type things as well. And when you put things together, the experience was absolutely huge. And so I just have to praise the game hugely for just getting me sucked in and making me really just engage with the world and enjoy it as much as I did for over 100 hours. So it, it basically, in that sense, considering what the blueprint for this game was, the fact that they basically have to do like act two of a bigger story, it's a bit more, this is where the game opens up. The world opens up. It's more about the exploration, the adventure, the journey, as opposed to reaching a conclusion or really having like the intense parts of the story appearing. Given that that was what they had to work with, once again, much like how in Remake they only had the Midgar section to work with, given that story-wise that's the section that they had, I think this was, again, the absolute pretty much perfect way that they could have handled this. They focus more on the characters, their exploration and the world. And yes, of course, the big story moments, a lot of the ones that we know from the OG happen. And of course, towards the end of the game, considering where the game goes, a lot of big, intense things do happen as well. But I think they really nailed the atmosphere and the feel of, of what this game needed to be in terms of its position within the trilogy of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. So yeah, I think it's just been designed in a way where there's kind of something for everybody. If you want to push on with the story, there were definitely people that ignored a lot of the side material and just did the story. That's great, you can do that and you can enjoy that. 
If you're the kind of person like me who's a bit more in the middle, you, there's a lot of stuff that you tend to just ignore first time round, and you, you like to push on with the story while still doing some of the side material, it's good enough to generally hook you in and push you more towards doing everything than just doing, say, like 50% of the material and moving on. And so anyone that's not really just purely in it for the story, either you're just going to not like the game because it's going gonna, it's gonna to basically demand too much of you in terms of exploration and doing other things other than the story, or like me and most of the people that I've talked to and, well, the glowing reviews that it has at this point, you are going to get sucked into this game and you are going to end up doing a lot of stuff, if not basically everything, and turning this playthrough into like 70, 80, 100, 120 hours long and really having an absolute adventure with it. And so all in all, I just have to say it was truly brilliant. Um, I had a wonderful time. I'm looking forward to having you guys see the rest of the series. In terms of criticisms, I think because it's me, I try to always give, you know, two sides of the coin. And even games that I really think are brilliant and that I love, there's always things that I think can be better. And I always have some criticisms. But for me, that's what makes me basically love these games even more. I love them despite their flaws. And every game has flaws. Um, for me, I would say this game, honestly, there really aren't that many. <laughs> there's like small kind of things that I'm not going to try and list out in this video. In terms of like the bigger overall picture, I think probably I would say the game was still, for my personal taste, maybe 20 to 30% too much. There was just kind of too much stuff to do. And eventually, I do think that some of the exploration and some of the like gathering of world intel, etc., did get a bit too repetitive for me. And I think if there was like 20% less, for example, world intel points, I think that would have made the game even a little bit tighter and a little bit better for me, a little less repetition. And so that's one area that I still feel like I, I think I would have preferred that. But that's a criticism I basically had for Elden Ring 2, and that's like a top five game of all time. So again, it's not a huge criticism. Secondly, I think this piggybacks off the first. Unfortunately, Chadley, I was one of those people that also found Chadley incredibly annoying in this game. Um, they basically link him to all of the intel and exploration stuff that you do. And so basically every single time, almost every single time you hit any point of interest, he talks and he talks and he talks. Every time you want to do something with like the combat simulator, he has like three or four lines before you get into the simulator. He just talks way too much in this game to the point where he becomes annoying. So that's one thing. Uh, I believe you can send his audio to your controller speakers. And if you mute your controller speakers, you at least don't have to listen to him as much. So that's a bit of a caveat there. But in general, he genuinely annoyed me. I think the scale also affected the visuals to some extent. It was one of those interesting games where big picture and when you zoom out a little bit, the areas looked amazing and fantastic and I loved traveling through. It's not it. The game doesn't look bad, but I think to create such a huge game, they really did have to sacrifice quality when you zoom in a little bit. And so the amount of textures, for example, or things that just really looked quite bad, uh, even without zooming in really was quite high. And because I'm used to the more kind of compact linear nature of Remake, where the visuals were incredibly tight and any bad visuals really did stand out, like for example, the infamous door, for me, like that door, there's thousands of those doors in uh, Rebirth. And so you don't notice it as much. And again, big picture, when you're out in like a big expansive area, uh, you just don't notice these things. But sometimes they say if you're in an interior room, uh, that the chair might be incredibly low quality. And so that did, that was a little bit jarring sometimes given how good the visuals can be for the remake trilogy. And so that was a bit of a personal bug for me that I didn't enjoy as much uh, with the visuals. And I think finally, I would say because the game is so huge, once again, it dilutes a little bit of like the storyline boss battles for me personally. I think the storyline moments, like the scenes and the dialogue and that stuff still really shine through. But I think in the grand scheme over the 103 hours, I think the storyline bosses just weren't at that absolute top level that they could have been. Uh, for Remake, I think it was a bit tighter. Again, because the story was so much smaller, they really had to make things a little bit more impressive and uh, dramatic and stand out a bit more, given how small the game was in comparison. But I think for Rebirth, there weren't enough good storyline boss battles moving forward. There were huge gaps between significant fights sometimes. And so when you did get them, they were kind of forgotten by the time you were 20, 30 hours down the road. And so I think because it's the middle part of the story where there's just less, I think, sort of memorable story bosses, great bosses happening anyway, and the fact that it is so big. And so any one thing happening in the story is small relative to everything else. 
it did end up diminishing, I think, uh, the quality of the storyline boss battles a little bit as well. So that's another area in which I think uh, the game wasn't absolutely brilliant. And I think just on the topic of dilution, I think it's the kind of, it's the fundamental thing that probably has a trickle down effect on a lot of other things. And so earlier on in the playthrough, I did say like once or twice that I, I wish that there would be more kind of enemies out in the world visible and especially a few bigger ones given how huge the game is my mind always always goes back to the likes of Final Fantasy 13 that had stuff like the adamantoises roaming around and stuff and that's just something that still I think to this day has not been repeated uh, in a Final Fantasy game and I think they're missing out because they keep making these big games these ambitious games but they refuse to have like these really big cool enemies just kind of roaming around for you to choose to be able to fight them or not and that's something that in this game Again, I think because the game had to be so huge, uh, that's one area where I, I feel like, yeah, like the open world, it, it was filled with points of interest and things to do, and the traversal between them was genuinely like fun and I had a good time. But would I have preferred there to be some more enemies in there? And especially like a few bigger ones just roaming around and that you could challenge or, you know, uh, try to hunt, etc. Yes, so I do think that's one area as well. That ended up being a minor thing, um, I noticed it more in like the earlier parts and I kind of just accepted it and I enjoy it for what it was and I didn't really find myself like 30, 40, 50 hours later just thinking yeah like this is still something that's bugging me. I kind of forgot about it but it's something that I do think would have enhanced the game and given how much stuff they did do for the world I think it really would have been nice if they just had a little bit more of that sort of Final Fantasy 13 Grand Pulse feel where they had some more of these like optional enemies that's not tied to world intel potentially that are just there and roaming around they just add an extra layer of like you know life to the particular areas that you're hanging out in so yeah maybe those particular enemies weren't in the og and that's why there's no point recreating them if they're not there but overall big picture this game was amazing i really really enjoyed it the sense of adventure the way that it drew me into those mini games the story moments the funny moments the goofy moments the amount of extra material there is to do in terms of mini games, exploration, and also battles. There's lots of difficult battles available as well to do. So if you're engaging with the gameplay and the combat as well, there's going to be challenges available for you too in like the combat simulator. And there's also some extra side material related to more difficult uh, battles that you can engage with as well. And so I feel like there's something for everyone, for the story people, for the exploration people, for the mini game people, for the difficult battle people, for the completionists, for the speedrunners, whoever you are, I feel like there's something for you to enjoy from this game. And so, yeah, I had a wonderful time and I just wanted to share that with you guys so that you don't have to wait for kind of the final episode basically of the series to, to get my feelings on the game. So I hope you guys are enjoying it too, whether you're watching, whether you're playing, whether you're doing both. I hope you have a wonderful time with Rebirth. The OG will forever have its place. The OG is untouched. It's timeless. I'm still going to play it. It's not. That's not going to change. But I think this uh, this general remake project has been a success, and Rebirth is truly a brilliant game. So that's all I got for you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care.